Olshaw, this Van Gogh leading the pack right now. Second place there, Van Gogh, just getting overtaken by uh, Hugo down there. Hugo, the boss. And then we have Van Gogh in, Van Gogh in first place. Vaughn, no! Vaughn hits the gate. Vaughn. In this video, we'll go over the build for the Video Aerial Systems V2 FPV WRA spec wing. But before I talk about how I went and built the V2 of this plane, I'd just like to touch on why I'm building the V2 versus continuing to fly the V1. So when I was at Liberty University for the competition earlier this year, the V1 ended up failing the tech inspection, and that's due to the angles on the sweep. This was a preventable issue had I measured the plane before gluing it or fixing it, but because I hadn't measured it before then, and we hadn't been given access to the template and, and some more information, but now that we know what the requirements are for making the wing, uh, the V1 doesn't pass. And so while they allowed it for Liberty University, it wasn't going to be allowed in subsequent races. Since I was going to be going to the Stone Blue Flying Circus, I wanted to make sure that the next plane would actually be compliant and pass the technical inspection. I went ahead and purchased a kit while I was at Liberty University and finally got it finished before going to Stone Blue. So I'm going to take you through the steps I went through, talk about some of the issues and solutions I came up with, and go over what makes this plane tick and how it really comes together. Time to build a new spec wing. I guess I got some cleaning I gotta do first. That project's coming in the future. All right, so we got our workspace tidied up here a little bit. And now I've got uh, all my parts laid out. We've got our VAS spec wing kit, some foam tack, goggles, battery, radio, camera, receiver. That's going to be my transmitter, ESC. We got our servos, a little servo extension in case I need it. Laminate soldering iron, helping hands, prop, little heat shrink. Mm -hmm. We got XT60 connector with a free sky voltage divider already ready to go for voltage telemetry. Tape measure so we can make sure we're all in spec. And the only other thing I guess I need is a knife before I get started. A couple notes on this one. The control arms here do not go in line with the wind so they're gonna they're generating a little bit more drag than necessary this whole motor mount is larger than it needs to be so I'm gonna see if I can shave it off and sink the wood in here much heavier ESC transmitter I've got this antenna up and this one up both causing drag those will be buried on the next one this adapter or this uh, battery holder here way heavy. I've also got a credit card on either side, a bunch of extreme packing tape and hot glue in the front, large camera. So overall, um, it's a little heavier than some of the newer builds out there. It's also got slightly toe in at the winglets, which is great if you're just building a smooth, stable FPV platform, but it's not so good for a racer because you're actually going to add a little bit more drag and slow yourself down some. This is actually the receiver that Van Gogh won the sport class with at Virginia Commonwealth Games earlier this year. He was uh, set up next to me and he burned his receiver or radio or something. His, his gear wasn't working well, so he uh, needed a receiver and a, an ESC from me. Um, and uh, this receiver, I figured it's going to be good luck, so I'll throw up my plane. Okay, here we have the VAS spec wing kit, and one thing I notice already is that he's got the sparring channels pre-guides uh, right there, which is going to make lining these wing halves up so much easier. Yeah, this is definitely going to be... easier just to get everything matched. So, step one here, I'm going to have to sand these edges and glue these pieces together. Once those have set up for a little while, I'll go ahead 
and do the same for these. So I'll do the outside at the outside joints first, and then I'll bring the two halves together. Okay, so one thing that I love about having these big cutting mats, they're uh, 36 by 24. So I can lay out the spec wing and see that it comes from edge to edge. So we know it's 36 span. I've got the tip a little bit past, but basically lined up right here. And then when I line the rest of it all up, it's, I just did it here, but it's a little tricky with only one here. But anyway, when you line the whole thing up and you dry fit it, it should measure out to spec. 12 inches back to the tip, 36 span, 9 root cord, 6 tip cord. That's it. So what I'm going to do now is get these two halves glued and these two halves glued. I sanded this down with some 150 grit and a simple hand block. When I go to do the whole wing, I might use uh, an electric sander set to very low speed with 220 grit and a very light touch just to make it go faster. We'll see. You don't really need much, but you do want to do enough where you're knocking down those surface um, peaks so that and it's a lot more flatter and the laminate sticks really well that way. Okay, so I've got the two wing halves glued up here and we've just used the beacon foam tack and the trick is to use a very light amount it'll stick just fine you don't want to add a whole lot of weight by loading it up with a ton of glue and then using these little t-pins you can pin it together and that'll hold that joint in place once you seam it up and you want to make sure it's nice and flat on both sides and that the front edge is nice and lined up Usually it works really well to start at the front edge and work your way back when you're connecting them at an angle like that. So now I can leave these two pinned up here and I can go ahead and glue the two wing halves right down the middle. Alright, so we have the whole plane frame glued up right now. I'm going to let this sit for a few hours. And you definitely want to use these channels to help you line the whole thing up. And you want to make sure, again, you don't have this a huge ridge right here. You want to make sure this is nice and smooth so you don't have any twist in the wing. So I've got it sit here pinned with a little bit of weight down. I'll probably add a little weight up front. But what I've done now is I've lined it all the way up at 18 inches here. And then if you come out here to the edge, you'll see just a little past, it's like a, what is that, 11 and however many, eights, I guess. You can see on the other side. So it's right here. We got it within spec. Um, so now all I have to do, let it dry. Then we will start sparring it up. And then I'll start cutting things out. Okay, so we have the frame here. It's all dried up. I've got the pins all removed. It's looking nice and clean. But it's definitely floppy. That's what this foam is. The EPP foam is going to be very floppy and flexy, especially at the lower medium densities, until we spar it and lam it. But before we can do that, we need to do some sanding here. I've got this automatic sander. It's got a speed control on it. So I can slow it down and it not go crazy fast and tear up the foam. So we're going to go ahead and try and break this out here and uh, get this thing sanded up. Alright, so we've got the frame sanded up now. It actually feels smoother to the touch and that's really a good indication of whether or not you have some more to do. I feel some spots back here where it's a bit thinner. I might have to touch up by hand and probably some uh, leading edge spots where I need to wrap the foam, the foam with the sandpaper and, and go around it. But other than that, it's feeling nice and good and it's uh, about ready to start sparring. And then I'll cut the battery bay out after I've got the spars in. All right, so before I get any further, I've got my control surface sanded up as well. I'm gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of paint on here not much, uh, I don't want to weigh it down, but just a little bit for some flare.
All right, so I've got the wing painted up and I'm letting that dry. So for now, I'm going to start getting the motor mounted to the block and shaping everything down for a little bit more streamline action. Before I screw the metal mount to the bottom of the uh, spec motor here, I'm going to, I put a little bit of thread lock on the screws. And I'll actually let that sit and dry up for a minute before I drop it in there so it's not gooping up the motor at all. Okay, so we have the control surfaces and the plane painted up here, doing my pink and green scheme that I usually do here. And doing a little bit of black and natural wood color on the control surfaces. So one thing that I noticed is I, I mainly only taped here, but I had a little bit of overspray here very faintly. So next time, and if you do this for yourself, make sure you tape everything you're not painting, even if it is you know, a good distance away, you're, you're going to get some overspray. So. Next up, dropping in the spars.